Good evening to all of you. Welcome once again to our Lectio Divina. Let's make a short prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the Trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So once again, welcome to our Lectio Divina. This coming Sunday is Trinity Sunday. So before we go to the actual lecture, let me give you a kind of an introduction to the mystery we are about to celebrate this coming Sunday. The mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. This is according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 234. It is the central mystery. That means it is the source of all the other mysteries. Kaya nandun lahat nakatutok. Pag nawala ang misteryo ng banal na Trinidad, bagsak po lahat ng misteryo ng ating pinagdiriwang. That includes the mystery of the Incarnation, the mystery of the Holy Eucharist, the mystery that we celebrate in every sacrament. It is all based, founded on the mystery of the Holy Trinity. That's the reason why it's a very important feast. Actually, this is the only feast where we celebrate a doctrine. God Himself is the mystery that is really part of our life. And uh, somehow, since it is a mystery, we may not understand it completely. When God is a mystery, somehow He is like a parent who could not explain everything to his children. And sometimes the children would ask questions to the parents, eh, bakit ganito? Bakit ganyan? Eh, at times, the parents would not answer anything because the parents would know that the children will not understand also even though they give an answer. So somehow, the same also with us. At times, God reveals something and perhaps we will not understand everything because we are just children. Or perhaps we are like babies who do not understand many things in life. Actually, at the end, the mystery of the Trinity may not be really explained or understood. It has to be experienced. And that we shall see later on. The mystery of the Holy Trinity actually was attacked by many heretics for the past... You know, even until now, but in the early church, there were already some heretics, or we, we call it the Trinitarian heresies. But we, before we go to the Trinitarian heresies, remember the story of St. Augustine. St. Augustine was the one who defended the Holy Trinity against many heretics. And one time he had a vision of a child walking up and down along the seashore. This child made a small pit in the sand, and he was walking up and down, getting water through making use of a shell, and then the water from the ocean, he will put it inside the, the pit, the small pit. And Augustine saw him. And so Augustine asked the child, what are you doing? And the child said, well, I'm trying to put the whole ocean into this pit, making use of this shell. And Augustine said, that's impossible. You cannot put the whole ocean into this small pit of yours. And the child said, well, the ocean is easier to put inside the small pit than for you to understand the Holy Trinity inside your small intellect. So natulala si St. Augustine. Naintindihan niya na talagang mahirap ma-explain, maintindihan ang banal na Trinidad. No wonder 
marami rin mga heretics na they try to understand it, pero at the end, mali-mali naman ang kanilang tinuturo. So, some of these uh, Trinitarian heresies, number one is Arianism. Arianism was, uh, was initiated by Arius, a priest. And uh, he was actually promoting that Jesus Christ is not God. He is just a created being. Eh, kung si Jesus hindi sa Diyos natural, He cannot be part of the Blessed Trinity at hindi na Trinity. So that's why it's also a heresy. And then there is also Macedonianism. It was started by Macedonius, who was a bishop of Constantinople. And Macedonianism says that the Holy Spirit is not God. The Holy Spirit is just an angel, it's just a creature. And then, there is another heresy, modalism. Ang modalism naman, yung Trinity has only three modes. In other words, yung Father, in one mode, naging Father siya. In another mode, yung Father, naging Son. In another mode, yung Father, naging Holy Spirit. So, three modes. Ha? Parang ano yan eh? Sa Avenger, nagbabago yung anyo, nag-iiba yung kanyang pagkatao. Ganun ba yung Trinity? No. Modalism is a heresy. And then, there's also the fourth one. Tritaism. Tritaism is saying that there are three gods, hindi one god. Arianism was sold during the Council of Nicaea in the year 325. And then, Macedonianism, Modalism, Tritaism was actually sold in this coming council or the council after Nicaea, the council of Constantinople in the year 381. In other words, maalala natin yung mga problema tungkol kay Jesus, kung siya ba ay Diyos o tao lang, yung problema tungkol sa Holy Spirit, Santissima uh, banal na spirito, kung siya ba'y tao, anghel, o spirito lang, no? Diyos ba siya o hindi, yan ay tinalakay na noon pa sa sinapupunan ng Christianesimo. Yung mga tao ngayon, hindi bang mga reliyo na kulto, eh, nilalabas lang nila yung mga problema na noon na ay na-resolve na. Kaya, it was already sold many centuries ago. Bu a good example of that is the divinity of Christ in the year 325 in the Council of Nicaea. And now, in the Council of Constantinople in the year 381, it says that we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the life-giving one, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified. So here is very clear, the Council Fathers declared that the Holy Spirit is divine, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. In other words, here in the Council, the Blessed Trinity is already well defined. That the Father is God, that Jesus Christ is God, that the Holy Spirit is God. But there are no three gods. There are only three persons in one God. Why? Because first, they are distinct. The Father is different from the Son. The Son is different from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is different from the Father. They are distinct. And then, they are also one. That means, one consubstantial trinity. They are not divided. They are one God. And then, they call it relative. Relative means, the Father is holy in the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Son is holy in the Father and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is holy in the Father and the Son. That is the meaning of relative. Now, do you understand that? A father, hindi namin naintindihan. Okay lang yun. Mystery nga eh. Kaya ang hirap intindi, hindi buba. Pero, madali naman maintindihan three in one. Eh, marami tayong Kinakain ngayon, three in one. No? So, there are only three persons in one God. So, the council has clarified, has defined, and has deepened 
the knowledge about God, and thanks be to God, the early fathers have already well defined this mystery for us to believe. Yun lang naman ang kulang sa atin. Do you believe this mystery? And many times we don't believe it because we have not experienced the mystery. Let us now start with the reading of the Word of God, the Gospel for this coming Sunday. A reading from the Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, this coming Sunday is a reading coming from John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. I hope you have your Catholic Bibles with you, and I hope you have your Bible Catholic. And this reading, they said, is actually like a compendium or the summary of the whole Gospels. It's a very beautiful reading. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. But we go, before we go to the actual Gospel, once again, please remember that the Trinity is a mystery of faith. And this is according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 237. The Trinity is a mystery of faith. One of the mysteries that are hidden in God, which can never be known unless they are revealed by God. Pag hindi pinakita sa atin ng Diyos yan, hindi natin malalaman ang banal na Trinidad. Ngayon, sasabihin ng ibang mga protestante o mga hindi kristyano, ay eh, wala naman yan sa Biblia yung salitang Trinity. Ba't kami maniniwala dyan? Ang sagot naman natin sa kanila, hindi naman lahat ng totoo ay nasa Biblia. Hindi naman lahat ng totoo ay nakasulat. Explicitly, talagang nakasulat sa Biblia. Ang magandang halimbawa dyan, yung Bible. The word Bible, you will not find it in the Bible. And yet, it's true. Di ba? And many Protestants, the non-Catholics, they also believe in the Trinity, even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible because they believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, it is a hidden mystery. And it's very good to know that these hidden mysteries, just like what Jesus said in the past, that it can be revealed only to those people who are humble and simple, while He hide them to the learned, yung mga mayayabang. So, if you want to understand more the mystery of the Blessed Trinity, the first attitude we should have is to have humility, is to have simplicity. And most important of all is to have the attitude of gratitude. Dahil sa pag hindi pinakita sa atin ng Diyos, hindi natin malalaman na ang Diyos ay pag-ibig, na ang Diyos ay Meron tatlong persona, pero iisang Diyos. So, this is the first attitude that we should have in front of this mystery of the Trinity, which was hidden in the past. And thanks be to God, God revealed it to us, the attitude of gratitude. Now, in the Old Testament, even though it was not explicitly revealed, the Trinity was somehow foreshadowed. And it's with them foreshadowed. There's an allusion referring to the, to the Blessed Trinity. Para bang nagpapahiwatig sa lumang tipan na 
ang Diyos ay meron tatlong persona. In other words, there are hints and clues in the Old Testament that the Trinity exists. It's like an enigma, parang puzzle. And one of the clues that the Trinity exists, you will find that from the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. You remember, in the book of Genesis, the first chapter was speaking about creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then later on, he said, And God said, Let us make man in our image and likeness. Like us. Let us make God in our image. Let us, plural, our image, plural, like us, plural. Kaya itong pronoun plural, somehow it gives a hint na ang Diyos hindi lang siya one person. Parang hindi siya nag-iisa. And it's so beautiful na in the beginning was mentioned in the book of Genesis as well as in the book or rather in the Gospel of John. It begins with in the beginning. Halos pareho, no? The book of Genesis said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Doon sa Gospel ni John, also it started that way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made. And yun, through Him, through the Word, and who is the Word? Jesus Christ. In the beginning, there was Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was with God. And this Jesus Christ was God. And in the beginning, nothing was created without Him, without Jesus Christ. Kaya, creation was a work of the Trinity. It's not just the work of the Father. God said, let us, let us make man in our image like us. So in the day of creation, the Blessed Trinity was there. Some church fathers like St. Irenaeus, Justin, Barnabas, they held that by speaking in the plural, God foreshadowed the revelation of the Blessed Trinity. And in fact, the word God the word God, the Hebrew word God is Elohim. And Elohim, in the original language, is plural. Elohim is plural of Eloah or El, which is God. El means God. Eloah means God. Elohim is God's. So, ito, there's also a clue here that God is not alone. There must be someone with God. Because it's plural. So this is one clue that somehow foreshadowing the Trinity from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Another one, it's the same book from the book of Genesis chapter 18 verse, verses 1 to 3. We read these verses, Yahweh appeared to him, that's to Abraham, at the oak of Mamre, while he was sitting by the entrance of the tent. And he looked up, and there he saw three men standing near him. As soon as he saw them, he bowed to the ground. Did Yahweh appear to Abraham through these three men? Most probably, yes. And this Yahweh, or these three men, actually wanted to manifest to Abraham that his wife Sarah will have a child. In fact, when Sarah heard that he will have a ch she will have a child, she laughed. Why? Because Sarah was already 90 years old. Kaya parang nagulat siya. Paano siya magkakaroon ng anak and 90 years old na siya? Well, at the end, 
she had a child. And uh, that child will become, from that child will come the chosen people of, of God. But what is important here is that Yahweh somehow appeared to Abraham through these three men. So these are some verses that somehow foreshadowed the mystery of the Blessed Trinity. So this is a simple painting of what happened when these three men appeared to Abraham. Somehow foreshadowed the Blessed Trinity. Now let's go to the Trinity revealed. So, before we saw Trinity foreshadowed, now, how was the Trinity revealed, particularly in the New Testament? Let's read John 3, verses 16 to 18, or rather, verse 16, the gospel that we are about to hear this coming Sunday. God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, His only begotten Son. And as I have said, for many commentators, this is somehow the summary, the compendium of the whole gospel, if not the whole Christianity. Uh, sabi nila, kung gusto mong meron kang maalalang verse in the whole Bible, ito lang, pwede mo nang i-memorize. Huwag mo nang kakalimutan yan. John 3, 16. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. God so loved and the word love, we know very well in the Greek language, there are four or even five different kinds of love. So, the eros is the first one in the Greek word of love. Eros is a kind of a sexual love. The storge, we have seen before, is also a love of family. The philia or philia is the love of friends. And the agape love is the sacrificing love. You know very well that the verb to love and the noun love is a very important word for John in his gospel. In fact, itong love na ito, it, this was mentioned about 37 times in his gospel. You see, 37 times is a, is a good number. That means it's really important compared with other words in his gospel. 37 times. And the word that Jesus, or rather, the word that John used in this word, God so love, is the agape love, the sacrificing love. Imagine, he has to sacrifice his only son. Talagang malaki yung pag-ibig ng Diyos. Kaisa-isa niyang anak. It's just like a parent, their only son was sacrificed uh, to enter the seminary, for example, kaisa-isa ang anak. Pinapasok mo pa sa seminaryo. No? It's a sacrifice. And that sacrifice is a manifestation of love, the agape. And then, the word world. God so loved the world. The world designates the created universe, including mankind. In the Greek word, they use cosmos, world. And you say cosmos is an ordered system, the universe, the world. And since God so loved the world, the world is considered in itself as good. It is not evil. Kaya nga minahal ng Diyos eh. Kaya sa, ang nilikha niya ay mabuti. Wala siyang nilikhang masama. Lahat ng nilikha niya ay mabuti. So the world in itself is not evil, but it can be so by rejecting Christ. The world becomes evil if humankind will reject Christ. If the world will reject Christ. Pero it's not evil. This is in contrast with the Gnostics who were already existing during the time of John when he was writing this gospel. The Gnostics or the heresy of Gnosticism wherein they think that they will be saved through their Gnosis knowledge, the cosmos knowledge. And this cosmos knowledge means that you are spiritualized. And so you save yourself. So the more you become a spirit, the more you save yourself. Kaya nga for the Gnostics, matter is evil. The world is evil. In fact, they don't believe in the incarnation. 
Because the incarnation says God became man. So God became matter. Will not, they will not accept that because matter is evil and the world is evil. But for us Christians, for John, no, the world is good. It's not evil. In fact, God became man. God became matter like us. So that is in contrast with the Gnostics who believe that the world is evil. But for John, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So much so, in John chapter 17, verse 15, there was the prayer of Jesus. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. So here, what is important for us to remember is that God so loved the world. God is love. Later on, John would write in his letter, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in them. God is love. I believe if you really want to understand the Blessed Trinity, we really need to contemplate more on this mystery of love that god is love and through this mystery that god is love we will understand more why there are three persons in one god god is love let us try to illustrate it in this conversation so to say between an atheist and a christian in order for us to understand why through this mystery God is love, we will understand more the mystery of the Trinity. If an atheist would ask, why do Christians believe in the Trinity? Bakit yung mga Kristiyano naniniwala sa banal na Trinidad? Ang sagot naman ng Kristiyano, because we believe that God is love, before everything was created. Dahil sa kami, naniniwala na ang Diyos ay pag-ibig bago niya nilikha pa ang lahat. Bago niya nilikha ang lahat, pag-ibig na siya. And the atheist will continue, If God is love, then He must love someone before everything was created. Kung talaga ang Diyos ay pag-ibig, dapat meron siyang minahal noon pa bago niya likain ang lahat. Ang sansinukob, sandaigdigan, sangkatauhan. Bago niya nilika lahat yan, dapat meron siyang inibig. At tutuloy pa niya, who did God love before the universe existed or before men were created from the very beginning? Eh sino nga ang minahal niya bago niya nilika ang lahat kung siya ay Pag-ibig, surely God did not love himself because that will be self-love, egoism or narcissism. Dahil sa pagminahal niya yung kanyang sarili, bago niya nilika ang lahat, eh egoismo yun. Pagka makasariling tao siya o Diyos siya, narcissismo, dahil sa minahal lang niya ang kanyang sarili. Anong sagot ng Kristiyano? God did not love himself. God is love in Himself. There is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In other words, within God, love exists because the three persons are relations. Sa loob ng Diyos, ng pagkadiyos, ang pag-ibig ay nananahan na. Dahil sa yan tatlong persona ay kaugnayan sa isa't isa. Thus, Creation is really an act of love by God. Because even though God did not need creation to love, because He is already loved, still He created it to share His love. I hope we understand this simple conversation to explain why the mystery of God is love can explain the mystery of the Trinity. Creation is not an act 
of selfishness. Creation is really an act of love. When God created the universe, He did not create the universe because God was lonely at that time. Nag-iisa lang siya. So, feeling lonely, nilikha niya yun sa katauhan, sa sinukob. No. Kahit nawala yan creation, kahit nawala yung universe, God is still happy. Because God is love. Because within God, He already experienced love. Because precisely, there was the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Maybe we can ask ourselves some questions in order to reflect deeper and see how we can change our life through this Word of God. In the contemplatio, we can ask, God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. Let's ask ourselves, can we imagine sacrificing someone or something we love for a cause? Meron ba tayong pwedeng isakripisyo? Isang tao, isang bagay, for a real cause. Sa magandang dahilan. Baka makatulong sa sangkatauhan. Baka makatulong sa komunidad. What could be that someone or something that we can sacrifice for a, for a cause? And secondly, how can I share God's love with the world, with my family, with the community, with others. You know, itong mga question na ito, pwede kayong mag, mag-share. Pwede kayong magtanungan. If you are a family, you can make uh, some sharing. How can I share God's love with my family, with my friends, you know, with my neighbor, and show them that God is really love? You know? Of course, we will never show that God is love if we ourselves never experience the love of God. So we are in this Trinity revealed in the New Testament. If we will continue it, there are also other Gospels or verses in the New Testament wherein there is a hint of the Trinity. Luke chapter 1 verse 35, if you remember, it speaks about the Annunciation. And in this Annunciation, the angel Gabriel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. So here you have the three persons, the Holy Spirit, the Most High, and the Son of God. In this simple verse, you already have here the Blessed Trinity. Again, in Matthew 3, verses 16 to 17, this was about the baptism of Jesus. When John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, he said, when Jesus was baptized, the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son. So here you find again the three persons, Jesus, God, the Father, the Spirit of God, and then, or rather the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and then the voice of the Father from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. And again from John chapter 14 verse 16, wherein we read, I will pray to the Father. And he will give you another paraclete, which we have seen last Sunday, to be with you forever. So the I, Jesus Christ, the Father, and the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, verse 19, we find this when Jesus Christ commissioned his disciples to go and baptize and evangelize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And finally, 
In the second reading this coming Sunday, we will read this letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. And let me read it for you. Finally, brothers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Please remember, St. Paul was writing to the community of Corinth. And you know very well, in the community of Corinth, their main problem was division. Remember last Sunday, we were talking about the Pentecost Sunday, and the Pentecost actually gave us the gifts. And we have mentioned that this gifts is for the common good, to build the community. Unfortunately, the community of Corinth, there was so much jealousy because they think that they have the best gift while the others they don't have. Their teachers are better because they are be better gifted than the other teacher. So somehow there's jealousy, division. There was no unity. And here Paul is telling them, if you want to have unity, your unity should be based on the love of God. That God is love. And because of this, that will give you peace and unity among yourselves. And therefore, he said, greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. And this is the conclusion that he made. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is actually the greeting that we usually give at the beginning of the Mass. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. So here, you have the Trinity. Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And this Trinity, for St. Paul, will be the source of unity in the community of Corinth. Just like when Jesus Christ prayed, Father, that they may be one as we are one. That's John chapter 17, verse 22. The Trinity is a celebration of God himself who loves and wants to have a deeper relationship with us. A unique personal relationship with each person of the Trinity. Because here you find here, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Be with you. So here, this Trinity wants to have a relationship with us. Be always with us. So Trinity is the celebration of God's love. And this God's love is shared to all of us. He wants that we be part of this love. He wants that we be part of this trinity. He wants that he will, we will share the joy and unity in the blessed trinity. If you remember some three or four Sundays ago, I mentioned the word quatrinity. And quatrinity is our intimate relationship with the Father, with the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you really want to understand the mystery of the Blessed Trinity, we have to experience God in our life. We have to experience the Blessed Trinity in our life. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this Blessed Trinity is not something so transcendent that it doesn't want to have a relationship with us. No, on the contrary. In fact, if you remember John 14 verses 18 to 20, you remember, it says that I will not leave you orphan. I will come to you. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. That's the quatrinity. You in me and I in you. In fact, later on, St. Paul would say in his letter to the Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, it is no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. This is what we call the indwelling 
of the triune God in our soul. Our souls will, will be God's temples and God's homes. God's temple, because if you remember also in the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, first letter, chapter 3, verse 16, do you not know that you are God's temple and that the God's Spirit dwells in you? We become God's temple because there's the indwelling of God in our soul. And not only that, God wants to make a home with us. John 14, verse 23, we will come to Him and make our home with Him. It's so beautiful, Niba, right? that this Blessed Trinity wants to be with us within our life, within our soul, within our community, within our family. As a final contemplatio, am I spiritually, socially distant from God? How can I enhance my relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? In these past days, we have been hearing socially distant, social distance, social distancing, etc., etc. Now let us enhance our relationship with the Blessed Trinity. We should not be socially distant from God. And God wants to make a home with us. If we want to explain, or rather to understand better the Blessed Trinity, we need to experience the Blessed Trinity in our life. Many times we make the sign of the cross. And I thank the parents when they teach their children to make the sign of the cross. Do we really know how to make the sign of the cross? Making the sign of the cross, we have the, the thumb, the first and the second finger together. Actually, this tree represents the Trinity. And the second, the right, the last two fingers are placed to the palm of the hand. And those two fingers actually represent the humanity and divinity of Christ. In the person of Jesus Christ, there are two natures, human and divine. But the tree represents the blessed trinity. So when we touch our forehead, and then we touch our chest, and then our shoulders, we are actually praying that the blessed trinity will be in our mind, in our heart, in our life. The indwelling, the quatrinity, that God is in our soul, making a temple in us and making a home in us. You know, the early fathers, like for example, Tertullian, who died sometime in the year 250, but he was born already in the middle of the second century. He described the sign of the cross, of course, not perfectly the way we make the sign of the cross. But at that time, there were already signs of the cross, small signs of the cross. And this is what he wrote. In all our travels and movements, in all our coming in and going out, in putting on our shoes, at the bath, at the table, in lighting our candles, in lying down, in sitting down, Whatever employment occupies us, we mark our foreheads with the sign of the cross. And it was already in the second century. Also, St. Cyril of Jerusalem, who died in the year 386, in his catechetical lectures, he stated, Let us then not be ashamed to confess the crucified. Be the cross our seal, made with boldness by our fingers on the brow, and in everything, over the bread we eat, and the cups we drink, in our comings and in our goings out, before our sleep, when we lie down, and when we awake, when we are traveling, and when we are at rest. So beautiful. Do I make the sign of the cross properly? 
by being aware of its meaning and value as a Christian? Let us reflect on this and let's see how beautiful the Blessed Trinity is manifested in our lives just by the simple sign of the cross. Let us now pray on God's Word and let us take the prayer from the book of Daniel chapter 3. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Blessed are you in the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Thank you and good night. God bless you. See you next week.